In terms of the media narrative, or certainly the Trump camp narrative, that this trade war is hurting Beijing more than it's hurting the US, you saw President Trump taking a stab at the declines we've seen in US stocks and other, uh, in, I should say, Chinese stocks and other asset classes of late. Is that a true kind of distinct, distinction that should be made, or are we not giving Beijing enough credit for being able to get this under control? Well, look, I, I wrote a book a few years ago, Heidi, about um, <clears throat> the two-way relationship between the United States and China, one that I called codependency. And yes, China depends uh, on U.S. consumers to uh, provide external support to its export-led economy. But you know, on the other hand, uh, American consumers depend on $500 billion of low-cost Chinese goods to make ends meet when their budgets are under pressure. And a saving short U.S. economy uh, needs surplus savings from China to help fund its budget deficits, which are going from bad to worse. So the idea that uh, America's got the upper hand because the Chinese stock market uh, is under pressure um, is really uh, wide of the mark and um, very smug and complacent uh, in, in terms of our president's appreciation of the role China plays in supporting the U.S. as far as I'm concerned. We know that the trade war hasn't played well back home for Xi Jinping and in fact there's been lots of pressure points for the Chinese president over what's been dubbed the summer of uh, discontent, if you will. Do you think that this is setting up for a war of attrition or do you think there is any kind of roadmap to a more conciliatory relationship even if we do get this next round of talks? Well, I'm sort of worried that um, we, we don't have a, um, uh, a good appreciation of the, uh, the end game to a more constructive outcome, because I think what the U.S. Uh, is after here is for China to um, give grounds on its core industrial policies like Made in China 2025 or the artificial intelligence um, plan for 2030. These are critical to China's innovations-based strategy to uh, stay the course of economic development. And the Trump administration appears to object to these uh, um, uh, plans as being a real threat uh, to America's economic future. Uh, and so if, if the U.S. is looking for China to give ground uh, in, in that respect, I think mm. being for a rude awakening. Stephen, of course, this is the 10th anniversary of the great financial crisis. Uh, will the next downturn come from China? No, I don't think so. I think um, the, the um, uh, Chinese economy, while it's um, uh, portrayed as being weak by the Trump administration, I think is a lot stronger than widely appreciated. And I hesitate to draw the connection between uh, the stock market in China and the uh, state of the Chinese economy. The economy is still growing 65 to 7%. It's addressing a serious debt problem, uh, and it's making progress uh, in rebalancing its economy uh, significantly. So I, I don't see China as the source of the next crisis. What about emerging markets? Because, you know, there's an argument this was always meant to play out in three acts, right? The first act was clearly the US economy and Wall Street, then over to the European sovereign debt crisis, and then it was going to be emerging markets and possibly this Minsky moment in China. Do you see that third act still playing out? Not not in, in China. I think there are certainly are some pressure points in emerging markets, um, uh, obviously Argentina and uh, Turkey come to mind, uh, but um, you know this was to, to be expected as the central banks uh, now start to withdraw the excess liquidity they pumped into the financial system in the aftermath of the uh, global financial crisis in 08 and 09. So the taper tantrum a few years ago was a warning of um, pressures to come in emerging markets, and it was a, actually a pretty prescient warning uh, as we see that. Um, uh, playing out. But you know, emerging markets are uh, not nearly as vulnerable as they were, say, 20 years ago uh, in Asia, where there were, when there were no currency reserves uh, and there were a lot of uh, unsustainable fixed exchange rates.